Steve John at ringside along with my broadcast colleague Paul Adams and styling Shane Eaton doing some styling, but it looks like Brickhouse Brown is going to take the style right away from him. Absolutely, Michael. You see him out there grandstanding with the crowd showing off this hot dog, and you see what he got for it. Brickhouse Brown's taken right over at the outside of this match. No love lost between these two. Brickhouse Brown and Stylin' Shane Eaton have been going at it for several weeks here on MCW, and the war continues here tonight at the Fairgrounds Arena in Nashville, Tennessee, and now Stylin' Shane taking over. Very typical of this match, though, Paul. One will take over, beat the daylights out of the other one, and just when you think the match is over, here comes the other opponent. No doubt, Michael, and I'll tell you another thing that you want to notice in this one. The guys like Shane Eaton that play up to the crowd around here and like to play by the rules, usually it might take them a little while to start using closed fists, but not in this one. Right from the get-go, Shaneen's in there with not only with a closed fit, but his fist is also taped up, if you'll notice. I believe the crowd here at the Fairgrounds Arena a bit shocked about, about how this match got underway, as it looked like we were going to have some kind of introduction, and, and the introduction was just a pier six between Brickhouse and Stylin' and Shane, and look at that high-risk maneuver off the top rope onto the floor. No doubt, right off the bat, Michael, and the only thing that got introduced to, to Stylin' and Shane Eaton right there at the onset of this match was a couple of boots to the midsection from Brickhouse Brown. Now you see them are going right in through the crowd that you were talking about. Well, this is a street fight, and it's just a brawl, and that's how these two men have gone after each other. There has not been a wrestling match between the two. Brickhouse Brown was upset by Stylin' and Shane Eaton, in a, a recent match and is quite upset about it. Style and Shane said, hey, I did it to you once, I can do it again. And look at this, Brickhouse taking him right into the chain link fence. Well, absolutely, it's gonna be brutal, Michael. And you're talking about Shane Eaton scoring an upset victory over Brickhouse Brown. Let me tell you something, you know, Bob Euchre once hit a home run off of Sandy Koufax, so anything could happen. That don't mean that Bob Euchre was a great baseball player, and it certainly don't mean that Shane Eaton's more talented in the wrestling ring or in a street fight, which they've got a lot of those coming up around this area in MCW as Brickhouse Brown. Boy, you talk about a brawl. This has just turned into, it's totally out of hand. The referee trying to separate the two men. That's going to be impossible. They have both gone to each other tooth and nail before, and they have not let up in this match. And look, just as you thought Shane Eaton had the worst for wear, here he leads Brickhouse Brown back to the ring, gives him a little shot to the eye. And look at this, Brickhouse going to take him right into the pole. Imagine what's going to happen, Michael. Now, this is just a regular match. It's supposed to be contested under regular wrestling rules where you need to score a 1-2-3 count in the middle of the ring to win it. Imagine what's going to happen when these two go at it in a street fight. Security over there. Now they're down the other aisle. Whoa! Going downstairs, Brickhouse Brown raising the elevator from the floor and now kicking away at Style and Chain. And Style and Chain, he is hurt. Without a doubt, this young man is hurt. And I'll tell you what, Michael, that's exactly what he gets. You know, week after week after week here in MCW, this Shane Eden was no doubt the Clarence Thomas of professional wrestling harassing Princess D. And that is not something, that is not something at all, Michael, that Brickhouse Brown took lightly. Of course, Paul Adam alluding to the fact that Princess D has made a big deal over the uh, rumor or supposed action of Shane Eaton sending her quote unquote love letters. And quite frankly, I haven't seen evidence of any of that. I think that's sort of a, a figment of Princess D's imagination. Brickhouse Brown though, taking this fight to style and chain, whether that lit the fuse in this uh, controversy, in this battle or not, the fact of the matter is you've got two young athletes right now just giving it their all and going after each other just like they would in the street. Absolutely, and just like in the street, Brickhouse Brown is the one with the advantage in this match. You see what he's doing? He's working over Shane Eden right now. He's got the decided advantage, as a matter of fact, in this one. It looks like he's going to go to work on the leg right there. You don't want to get into a street fight with a man who knows how to street fight. And I have seen Brickhouse Brown in action. He is a street fighter from the word go. Styling Shane Eaton, I'll, I'll be honest with you, he has given quite a compliment of himself and his wrestling prowess or his fighting prowess in staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brickhouse Brown. But right now, Brickhouse has Shane Eaton worse to wear. Well, I don't know if it's really his fighting prowess or his wrestling talent and skill or anything like that. You know, he's all upset crying and whining, there's a bunch of tears in his beers over the fact that Brickhouse Brown got in there and Powell drove Shannon Eaton, Shane's sister. Well, right now, Brickhouse Brown going for the back body drop, Shane Eaton up and over. Brickhouse, oh, kicking downstairs again. Bulldogs him down. And that, that incident over the pile driving of Shane Eaton's sister, I, I gotta tell you, Paul Adams, I made the comment here on wrestling a few weeks ago here on MCW. Here's a pinfall, one, two, oh, almost a three. 
it was probably the most dastardly and cowardly act I've ever seen in the world of professional wrestling. Well, whatever, Michael. But I'll tell you what, I don't even think Brickhouse was looking to score a, a three count right there. He's just looking to punish this guy because this guy, you know what he is? He's a wise guy. Comes out here and hits on Princess D and all that stuff. But I'll tell you what, not only is Brickhouse an accomplished fighter as far as these street fights they got coming up going is concerned, he is a wrestler. He is quite possibly the most all-around talented wrestler in this organization. Style and Shane Eaton suffering the effects of Brickhouse Brown's continual downstairs maneuvers, if you would, in this match. And now Brickhouse just launching him out to the floor here at the Fairgrounds Arena. Again, I think the fans are, are really shocked. They're, they're voicing their opinion of this match, but I think they're really shocked over the action, the violent nature of this street fight. Well, they shouldn't be shocked, Michael, because these, fan, these people around here, most of them in that crowd, they're all family, they're all related. It's like one big Incest Fest 98 out there at the Nashville Fairgrounds every Saturday. And I'll tell you what, they like to say how, well, you know, my next to kin is so important to me and all this stuff. They shouldn't be surprised that Shane Eaton has taken exception to the way that uh, Brickhouse Brown manhandled his sister. Well, right now, Shane Eaton doing the do to Brickhouse Brown. What's good for the goose is good for the Brickhouse Brown. And here comes Shane. Now he's pounding. Look at this, a drop kick right on the floor. Brickhouse kicked back toward the dressing room. And I gotta tell you, this match has been out of hand from the opening bell. Well, there wasn't even an opening bell. They have fought in the bleachers, they have fought in the chairs, they fought on the floor. Part of the match, yes, actually has been into the ring, but this match has just been literally all over the place here today to start out our action on MCW. And I got news for you, I don't see anything being settled here. These two have a lot to settle, but these two are just fighting it out right here, right now. And I see this battle continuing and going on and on and on. Well, there's no doubt because I'm not sure what it's going to take for Brickhouse Brown to be satisfied, and I'm not sure what it's going to take for Shane Eaton to be satisfied. You know, Brickhouse don't want this Shane Eaton looking at his woman, Princess D, waiting out. Here's a pin, one, two, and oh, whoa, look at this. Brickhouse Brown at the last moment loops the ropes, one, two, and Shane Eaton unable to hold him down for that third count. A couple of near pins for Shane Eaton, but Brickhouse Brown jabbed the eyes and broke the pin count. Yeah, well, I was telling you how Brickhouse is talented all around. He can wrestle, he can brawl, he, he can do it all. And he had his chance there to get a quick rest by putting his foot on the rope and taking a two count. That's exactly what he did. Now you see Shane Eaton take it back over to Power Slam right there. It looks like he's going to go for a cover. He's got him again and again. Brickhouse Brown rakes at the eyes. And that breaks the count. Paul, I got to say, Brickhouse Brown is one of the most accomplished wrestlers when it comes. Look at this. He rammed Shane Eaton right into the referee. I was gonna say that his ring savvy is probably as good as it comes. And right there, you seeing him use the position of the referee to his advantage. What are you talking about? What I seen right there is that Shane Eaton taking a cheap shot at that poor referee Briscoe. Now he's just about knocked out. He might've knocked that right eye of his straight for God's sake. And right now, Shane Eaton trying to uh, arouse the referee. And in the meantime, Brickhouse Brown has brought a chair into the ring. Hold on, Shane Eaton receiving a kick to the kidney. Give him a Brown, Russian leg sweep and down goes Shane Eaton. The small of the back across that metal chair. And that obviously took a lot out of this young star. That's it, take a seat Shane Eaton, take a seat. There's the cover by Brickhouse Brown, but the referee, he's out on his feet. He's literally trying to pull himself up. Hey, there's Chris Michaels. What, what is, is he? he? Chris Michaels has come in. He's off the top rope with the elbow to the back of the Now, what is Michaels doing down here in the ring? Michael St. John, I want you to call this. Michaels ran in near fear right there. That should be a disqualification. The fans love it. The referee is counting. One, two, three. That's it. Shane Eaton's going to get the victory. Well, that's a bunch of. Now, he. I'm telling you, it's going to be hell to pay when Brickhouse Brown gets a hold of this Shane Eaton. And I'm telling you what, if Andy Anderson gets a hold of that Chris Michaels, he's going to have problems too. You could be right, Paul Adams, but I got news for, wait a minute, here comes referee Gene Johnson into the ring from the dressing room. He's talking to referee uh, Bristow. What is this? There's I, a discussion there. Yeah, I think Gene's trying to tell him what happened there because that Michaels interfered in the match. That's what's going on. Well, there's a, a confrontation now between the two referees. One referee, there you see uh, Bristow giving the match to Shane Eat. Whoa, oh, now, now come on, now, Gene Johnson is just awarded Brickhouse Brown the match. Yeah, Briscoe's over there lying and Eden is swearing to it. And Gene Johnson right there is trying to tell these people the rightful winner is Brickhouse Brown. That's not right. That's not right. The pin occurred in the ring and the winner was Shane Eaton. Despite what happened, Shane Eaton got the pin. Here's promoter, here's promoter Burt Prentice coming to ringside and Shane Eaton coming to the floor. Boy, what a controversy there. The promoter raises the hand of Shane Eaton. And I got news for you, Paul, this ain't over. Nashville, Tennessee tonight at the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena.
Princess Dee is going to be there, and I'll be there right on time. You know what, Shane Eden? You know, I've been gone, but I've came back now. I had some royal duties to take care of. Well, I come back to what? A ghetto street fight match. You know what, Shane Eaton? You are crazier than I ever imagined. You have signed your name on a contract, a dotted line, saying that you'll get in the ring with this man right here. This man right here is Brickhouse Brown, Shane Eaton. Do you know where he comes from? Do you even have an idea where he comes from? You know, you wear your pants down around your ankles, and you might walk in the ghetto, but you've never fought in the ghetto. You've never even had to take on a ghetto. Well, let me tell you, Shane, this man right here has taken out more men in the ghetto than you've been living in years. So when you signed your name to that, you know, we put your sister out a few weeks back, but we're, you know, we just put her in the hospital. But you know, Shane, what's going to happen to you tonight in Nashville, Tennessee, in a few hours from now, is you're not only going to be put in the hospital, you're probably going to be going to the funeral home because you don't know what you've got yourself in for, Shane Eden. You know, I'm kind of glad that it's happening to get rid of you for once and for all because I'm fed up with you, Shane Eden, and now Brickhouse is going to make sure that I don't ever have to look at that ugly face anymore. You know what, Shane Eden, tonight, in a few short hours right there at the fairgrounds, you know, it used to be a place in Orlando, Florida called Circus World. And you might ought to call them and get a job there because you got to be the biggest clown in MCW to think you got a chance against me in a ghetto street fight. Sucker, I'm from Boggy Bottom, the Palm Place Projects. You don't believe it, check it out. I still got kin folks living there today. And in a ghetto street fight match where I have never lost, I done took out people like Ernie Ladd. Big Kamala, the Ugandan giant, wearing his, wearing his little skirt in the ring. I done beat them all in ghetto street fight matches. Now what the hell make you think you got a chance here in Nashville tonight against me and my type of match? We can fight all over the building, no DQ. It's got to be a winner. And tonight I'm going to serve you up. I'm going to break you off something real proper. Huh, I'm going to show you some tough love tonight. In a ghetto street fight match, sucker, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to punk your ass out right here in Nashville. And then I want you to take care of Chris Michaels because the people saw last week where I had to come out and help you. I don't want to have to do that no more. You're going to be on the first thing smoking back to Canada if I got to come out of the dressing room to help you again. Now, Shane Eden, handle your business. Tie up all your loose ends. Kiss them little rug rats you got running around. Goodbye. Because you might want to get yourself a reservation in Memorial General Hospital or go somewhere because you're going to be laying up hurt, bruised, and abused. Mr. Brickhouse Brown, you got a problem with me, baby boy. You signed this ghetto match. It doesn't make a difference where we have a fight. That's what it is. It's a street fight, punk. I'm coming there to take you out of professional wrestling, old man. And when you come in to mess with my sister, you mess with your life, not mine, punk. End up in the funeral home, baby boy, because that's exactly where you're going to be, punk. Well, after the way today's program has begun, Paul Adams, I tell you, one big match follows another. This a North American title match. The champion, the Colorado Kid, putting his belt on the line against an outstanding newcomer. Actually, he's been around uh, for the better part of a year, but truly in his first professional year of wrestling, Jason Lee wearing a patch over his right eye from a battle scar of an earlier match. But this should be quite a matchup as really the Colorado Kid, an outstanding young star with the belt against another young star in Jason Lee. Well, absolutely, Michael, but you know, not to take anything away from Jason Lee, but really, I don't understand why he's getting a title match right off the bat here, right after the Colorado Kid won that title belt back in that Mega Rumble, because to be quite honest, he's really not a top contender. What needs to go on is more of the stuff that is going on tonight in the Nashville Fairgrounds and all around the territory, including the Louisville Gardens, as Burt Prentice needs to give this guy some competition for that belt. No doubt about it, there is competition, and not only is there competition within MCW, there's competition from outside the organization, namely the NWA, who is bringing stars in. They want this North American title belt, as this belt has gained so much prestige in really a relatively short period of time. Well, absolutely, Michael. I'll tell you what, the reason for that being is, along with the World Wrestling Federation, there is no doubt MCW is absolutely the largest exposure for the NWA, and I wouldn't be surprised if they want to control the area. Right now, the Colorado Kid 
just uh, taking his time with Jason Lee. I, I will also say this, the Colorado kid, here's a man that has uh, been a professional wrestler for a, a few years now. He's still a youngster as a, when it comes to this sport. He has already held the unified world title. He now holds the North American title. Goodness knows what great things are in store in the future of the Colorado kid. Well, I have to go on the record, Michael, and just tell you, I happen to think that he's one of the most overrated wrestlers that I've ever seen in this business, but I'll tell you what, a man that is coming to Nashville, Tennessee for that big NWA 50th anniversary anniversary card coming up is none other than the former world champion handsome Harley race and I would like nothing better to see him go to the top rope on the sixth here in Nashville and give a big diving headbutt to this idiot the Colorado kid June 6th Nashville Fairgrounds Arena the 50th anniversary of the NWA and it will be celebrated right here in MCW territory and you've already mentioned Harley race I want to remind the fans get your advance tickets immediately Gold Circle, which are the first two rows of ringside, are $20, and it includes a dinner with the wrestlers prior to the night's events. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, if I have to show up to that occasion, I'm telling you what, I'm going to bring about 10 packs of Tums, Michael, because if i got to look at these people, I guarantee you, while I'm eating, I'm going to have a bad case of indigestion. Jason Lee taking over on the Colorado Kid. You mentioned Harley Race. He was one of the most prolific world champions of all time. He is quite an athlete still to this day. And when you talk about the legions of the NWA, the names read like a who's who in the world of professional wrestling. And speaking of who's who, boy, oh boy, Jason Lee is finding out who's who in the ring right now. Well, then I'll tell you what, you see him there with a big hip toss. This Colorado kid, you know, he's in there right now. Look at him gloating with the crowd. He goes for that big claw right there. That's one of his patented holds. And, you know, he's talked a lot about this lately, too, getting me in one of his new patented holds, that Rocky Mountain flat top. And I guarantee you there is no way that my man Flash Fang is ever going to let that guy do that to me. The Rocky Mountain flat top is a hole perfected by the North American heavyweight champion, the Colorado kid. He did so uh, after looking at mounds of film and came up, it's almost an inverted suplex and uh, a combination suplex and pile driver and it's a devastating maneuver. And Paul Adams, I hope for your sake that you never get it done because if you ever did have it done to you, you may not ever hold a microphone again. Well, I know you're very concerned about me, Michael, but let me just tell you this. You can rest easy at night because very, very recently, Michael, up in the Louisville Gardens, I'll tell you what, Flash Flanagan scored the one, two, three count clean in the center of the ring without any help from his partners, the volunteers on that occasion, or myself, Paul Adams. And he is, as far as I'm concerned, the rightful North American heavyweight champion. You're not going to mention anything about a foreign object in that match, obviously. Well, there was no foreign object in the match, so obviously I'm not going to mention it. But I will mention right now that Jason Lee right there scooted to the outside and without a doubt outsmarted this punk, the Colorado kid, now he's working on that knee. Jason Lee with a couple of shortcuts now bringing the Colorado kid to the apron of the ring. Jason Lee giving up a height and a weight advantage to the champion, and he has to take whatever moves he can make out of what he can make. And that's exactly what he did by taking the Colorado kid semi outside the ring. Well, you want to talk about how he's got all these disadvantages and stuff. Let me tell you about an advantage he has. He's underrated, and this Colorado kid, he underestimates just about everybody around here except for himself, who he just thinks he's all that in a bag of chips, Michael. Well, I'll tell you what, he's not, and he's finding out right here a man that's not even in the top ten scored a, almost a three count right there. He had a two count following that vicious clothesline. Now Colorado kid fighting back from his knees, pounding away at Jason Lee. And Colorado Kid trying to make it back to his feet. And you know who's got matches with this Colorado Kid coming up for that title belt, Michael? None other than from Georgia, Billy Black. Now, Billy Black, for those people that out there that aren't familiar with him, he has traveled to Japan. He's a former member of the Wild Bunch with his partner, Joel Deaton. They wrestled extensively for all Japan pro wrestling in the past. And he's going to give the Colorado Kid and these fans around here a lot of stuff they ain't never seen before. Right now, Jason Lee may have had a pinning combination right now, right there, but elected instead to put his knee across the throat of the Colorado kid. That got the break from referee Gene Johnson. And again, Jason Lee taking the shortcuts, trying to wear the Colorado kid down. Let's get back to this June 6th card. What a big event. In the history of wrestling, there is probably no organization that had more true champions than the NWA and the 50th anniversary celebration right here, Nashville, Tennessee, June 6th. We'll have all the details in the weeks to come here on MCW. There's a clothesline in return 
by the Colorado kid on Jason Lee. Right, well you see Jason Lee looking for a break here. Let's see if he can catch it. No, what he caught was a clothesline, but I'll tell you what, Nashville's got a lot of big stuff coming up, including the 50th anniversary of the NWA. You know, these fans around here are lucky. They get to see it right here in Nashville. It's the 50th anniversary of NASCAR, so they're living it up this year in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Michael. And now on the June the 6th, they've got that big anniversary card coming right here to the fairgrounds. Also, you fans in Louisville, Kentucky, and in the Atlanta, Georgia metro area in Cobb County, You'll see MCW Wrestling coming your way very, very soon. And we are really excited about being back at the Louisville Gardens each and every week. Off the ropes, back body drop, and down goes Jason Lee. Now Lee's in trouble right here, I can tell. I can just feel the momentum, and I can feel these people getting around this punk, the Colorado kid. And when they get behind their big heroes like this, a lot of times it means trouble for my friends, like Jason Lee. There's the elbow, Lee goes down. Colorado kid pursuing, off the ropes. Oh, caught him again, and down again he goes. I'm telling you, I'm gonna love seeing Billy Black get a hold of this guy, because he's gonna bring a combination of maneuvers straight ahead at this guy that he ain't never seen before, and that belt's in jeopardy. Colorado off the top. <laughs> Jason Lee moving out of the way. There's a boot to the side of the head, and Jason Lee kicking at the North American champion. Yeah, the Colorado kid there, the so-called North American champion, he threw a big air ball right there, and Jason Lee's gonna take back over. Jason Lee going to work on Colorado, pounding away as this match continues here on MCW. And Jason Lee again taking the shortcut, going right to the throat of the Colorado kid. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I would have thought this match would have been over by now with all that you people talk about the wonderful Colorado kid. But uh uh, what we're going to see right now is some showtime from the top rope from Hollywood Jason Lee. Jason Lee on the top rope. Look at this. Gonna do a little backflip, and ho, oh, nobody home, and there wasn't a pool of water to land in either. He hit the mat, belly first. There is the Rocky Mountain flat top, and this will be the match. Two, three, that's it. Colorado Kid retains the belt. More MCW wrestling action is coming your way right after this. Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, Friday night, May 8th. You better get your children, get them in the car, get down there, buy your ticket. It's the first time Flash Flanagan has signed a title match with the Colorado Kid. That's right. And I tell you what, Flash, don't leave that loud mouth Paul Adams at home. You bring him down there. I've got a few things to say to him, and I've got something to give him. Now, first things first, though. I told Burt Prentice, I said, look, I'm a champion, and I can't find no opponents. Now, having this belt, though, should be just like a target on my back. And that's exactly what's going on. Now they're sending guys from NWA, the, the Georgia champion, Billy Black. He's going to come down tonight. I don't know a whole lot about him, but I do know that he's friends with the Tennessee Vols and Flash Flanagan. Enough said about that. That's all I need to know. If you come looking for my belt, you ain't got to look far, pal. In fact, I tell you what, you just stand there. I'll look for you. I'll find you, and I'll put it in your face. Now, all you Nashville fans, you come out there tonight, it's going to be a big one. I can't wait to be there, and I can't wait to see you. You know, Robert, a lot of people ask me around the country, so Ricky Morton, where are you from? I tell them, L.A., Los Angeles, California? I says, Lord, no, Lower Antioch, right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And now I understand that Music City Wrestling has joined up with the NWA. And everybody yeah. around there knows that Robert and I have been five times NWA World Tag Team Champions, and we're looking to be number six. So things ain't gonna change. We're coming back to Nashville, maybe be Nashville or Louisville, it don't matter. One thing about it is, it's NWA and Music City Wrestling. You know, there's nothing like seeing it live, so come on tour with us next Friday night, and the big one is going to be in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, Civic Center. Well, you know, I'm sitting out here this week with a big ear-to-ear -ear grin on my face, and i got to say it's simply because I got the PMA going on. No, it's not something that happens to me once a month. It's my positive mental attitude, and it's pretty much an eight-day-a-week deal for Paul Adams. Now, we're coming to Lawrenceburg, Tennessee this coming Friday night, May the 8th, 8 o'clock at the Rotary Park Gym. Well, I assume it's like the rest of these redneck towns throughout Tennessee, and therefore I gotta go ahead and just state on the record that the people in Lawrenceburg are truly lucky to be having the card that Burt Prentice has put together because number one, two of my best friends in the world, the Tennessee Vols, are coming to town and they're taking on the Moon Dogs. Now you wanna talk about these Moon Dogs, people wanna go raving about how they're all crazy, and they come out and they'll smash a board over your head, and they'll take a trash can and stick it over your head and drop kick you. 
Well, that's just fine. I know I don't have to worry about my friends Stephen Dunn and Reno Riggins because that's right up their alley because you all know heh, the chairman of the board, he'll give you a folding chair necklace and a heartbeat. But then also in Lawrenceburg, we got the Colorado kid who comes out here and acts like he's the champion, right? Sits out here with his coat, looks like some one of these fans bought the Floby and also got the Bedazzler and gave it to him as a gift with that stupid looking coat that he's got the belt over his shoulder. Looks like he went to some costume jewelry store and said, oh, I would like to accessorize. Well, he's got that belt, and it don't mean that he's the best around here because the best is also coming to Lawrenceburg, and that's my man, my marquee player, the Peyton Manning of pro wrestling, Flash Flanagan. So basically, Lawrenceburg, you all need to come out and get a camera because the title's going to change May 8th at the Rotary Park Gym. Now tonight in Nashville, Tennessee, oh, yeah, the big six-man. We've got the limited edition and their partner, quote-unquote, Dangerous Doug Gilbert, taking on the Vols and Flash Flanagan. Now, we all know what's going on between the Vols, and they were out here talking about it. We all know the status of limited edition, and we all know the capabilities of Paul Adams and Flash Flanagan. But Dangerous Doug Gilbert, you want to come down here. You know, I don't know whether this is like a big flashback for these people out here. I know that the NWA 50th anniversary is coming up on June 6th. But I didn't know the so-called legend, the old-timers, we're going to be there tonight, Doug Gilbert, because that's what you are. You are past tense. You want to say you're a legend from a legendary family? Well, you know what legends are? They are certain people's interpretations of the truth. In other words, they're fiction. Well, the fact is, Flash Flanagan's coming, and you are the next step in the process of elimination. Wolfie D, J.C. Ice, and now Doug Gilbert, old man. So you better just call the geriatric ward, call the old folks home, and line yourself up a liquid meal and a bedpan, because tonight in Nashville, Tennessee, oh yeah, that's the last we're seeing of you. Michael St. John along with Paul Adams, our main event already underway here today on MCW, and what a tag team we have in the Tennessee Vols of Reno Riggins and Stephen Dunn. They're taking on the team of young Rob Conway, and he's joined by Doug Gilbert for this match. And Paul, you might want to get the fans up to date on the fact of what has happened with Nick Densmore and his knee injury and so forth. Well, Michael, Ronnie Millsap can see that right there to the right of your screen, we've got the Tennessee Vols, a proficient functioning tag team here in MCW, the possessors of the MCW Southern Tag Team Championship belts. But on the other side, you see we've got some mongrel combination between this Rob Conway, the so-called Iron Man, and dangerous Doug Gilbert, who I'm not too fond of either, right there on the outside. Well, this match takes on a whole new complexion in that Rob Conway's normal partner, Nick Densmore, was scheduled to be in this match, recently injured a knee, and I understand he is well on the road to recovery and will be appearing in several of the uh, MCW towns in the weeks to come, but unfortunately did not have doctor's clearance for today's main event here on MCW. So we get the tag team of the Tennessee Vols, and now Stephen Dunn comes into the ring against Rob Conway and his partner, Doug Gilbert. And this should be quite a match. In fact, uh, as we joined it in progress in the first minute or so of the match, it looked like both teams really trying to feel each other out because I don't think either team knows a whole lot about each other. Well, and I'll tell you what, this Conway, especially being a rookie that he is, I think he's let his temper get the best of him here in this one right from the outset and it allowed initially for the Vols to take control. Now you see Doug Gilbert coming in here with closed fists, Michael. Doug Gilbert is a true battler in the ring, and he is taking the fight right to Stephen Dunn and working over that left arm. Doug Gilbert, a wily veteran, knows, oh boy, look at that, Dunn going downstairs, and Gilbert bowled over and Dunn just slugged him, speaking of closed fists, and Doug goes down to the canvas. I'm telling you, I am so sick of looking at this Doug Gilbert. You know, he burnt my face off nearly about six months ago, and I got to look at him. I am so tired of this washed-up idiot, this old man. Uh, he's as old and worthless as them goofy jeans that he wears in the ring and them stupid cowboy boots. Well, I got news for you. Doug Gilbert, you talk about masters of proficiency. This man has fought the battle from both sides of the road, and I can tell you that he is a survivor, and he is a very proficient wrestler. And look at him. He's impervious to pain at times. Doug coming right back after that right hand of Stephen Dunn. Dunn takes him to the ropes. Whoa, look at that. Now that was a low blow right there, and you know what? I'm telling you, the Vols are going to be furious in just a few short hours, Michael. 
that Rob Conway is going to team up with his returning partner, Nick Dinsmore, taking on Flash Flanagan, my main man of the Tennessee Balls, and they're going to be a, a partners with that Doug Gilbert. And I'm telling you, I'm so shook up about the whole thing. I'm going to go look at Gilbert's face tonight. It's, oh, I can't stand. Now he's coming on the outside, no doubt, going for another cheap shot. Both of the Tennessee Vols, uh-oh, they're introduced head first, courtesy of Doug Gilbert. And I was absolutely right. He snuck up from behind Michael St. John MSJ and gave a, a nothing but a cheap shot to the Tennessee Vols on the outside. Well, Doug Gilbert knows all the tricks. And right now, he has taken command of this match for his team, teaming with Rob Conway. To my knowledge, Paul Adams, this is the first time that these two have joined forces. You've got the wily veteran in Doug Gilbert, and you've got the youngster in Rob Conway. Boy, you talk about a combination that could be volatile. That's lightning in a bottle in the corner there. Well, you've got the same type of situation coming up, Michael, for that six man that I'm talking about. You've got the youth and the wrestler of the year 2000, the new millennium in Flash Flanagan. Then you got this old washed up has been Doug Gilbert. Flash Flanagan has had a lot of things said about him recently on the internet and in wrestling publications around the world. Some are picking him to be the next superstar in the world of professional wrestling. And I will say this, if he can get his head on straight and not be the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, he just, he, uh, the, for the lack of a better word, wishy-washy in the ring, he could turn out to be something great, but I don't know right now. And look at Doug Gilbert going right to work on Reno Riggins, getting the same treatment that Steven Dunn just had earlier in the squared circle. Yeah, I don't know what Doug Gilbert's problem is. It looks like he looked, I think he took some like a woman's self-defense course or something. He's got these moves going on to the Tennessee Vols. I'm telling you what, I know for that six man, the Vols and Flash against Dinsmore, Conway, and his Doug Gilbert. Oh, I know my boys are all psyched up, Michael. Well, Nick Dinsmore obviously has a score to settle with the Vols. The Tennessee Vols are the ones that injured his knee, put him out of business. And in this business, when you're not wrestling, you're not getting paid. So when a young star gets hurt like that, it's costly both in his career and in his pocketbook. Not only that, you've got the wily veteran Doug Gilbert on that side of the fence. I will give you credit where credit's due. I will give the devil his due and that the Tennessee Vols, they are a good tag team. And when you put them in there with Flash Flanagan, Flash Flanagan in my mind has got to be the question mark because when he's on in focus, he's excellent. But when he's not, he could be crazy in that ring and that could be disaster. Well, let me tell you something about Flash Flanagan. Here's all I'm going to say. You know, when you're the general manager of a football team, you can wait a lifetime to get a marquee player, a marquee quarterback, such as Peyton Manning from right here in Tennessee. You're uh, talking about a franchise. That's exactly right, and that's exactly what I've got as the manager of the stars. I've got the star of MCW now, the Peyton Manning of professional wrestling, Flash Flanagan. He still has a large ladder to climb. And Mr. Adams, I got news for you. I don't know about working on his talent, but as far as working on his head, you've got a yeoman's job ahead of you. Well, I'll tell you what, as far as working on his talent and proving skills in the ring, he's going to be teaming up with the Tennessee Vols, baby. And there is no better way to improve than having the quality of tag team partners that we've got in that six man. I want to give credit also to promoter Burt Prentice for putting this match here today on television so the fans of MCW around the world can see the caliber of wrestling action, true wrestling action, as this is the wrestling organization for the next millennium. And you can see right now the double teaming of the Tennessee Vols. This is wrestling the way, the way it was meant to be. Oh, I guarantee you, Michael, this match right here is going to whet some appetites, not only for this big six-man tag team match that we've been talking about this whole hour, but also for June the 6th, the anniversary card for the NWA. 50th anniversary coming to the Nashville Fairgrounds Arena. There will be people from around the world, fans from around the world coming to this event. But needless to say, there will be wrestlers from around the world. Both current and former wrestlers of the NWA will be giving you the lineup. Already we can reveal that the uh, probably the most prolific champion ever in NWA history, Handsome Harley Race, will be here on June the 6th. Plus many, many more stars. Get ticket information from us here on MCW, but get your tickets early. I got news for you. We're expecting a record-breaking crowd in Nashville for this big NWA 50th anniversary card June the 6th. Well, absolutely. And you know, another thing I'd like to point out about the NWA, supposedly this Doug Gilbert now holds some title, the IWA, the Japan title that's recognized by the NWA. Well, I'll tell you what, in that six-man tag team match, why ain't that belt on the line? It's just like the Colorado Kid and all these other so-called heroes around here ducking the real competition. Why ain't, now look at Gilbert coming in there illegally. Why ain't his belt on the line in that match? Referee trying to maintain some kind of order, but right now as the referee tries to get Doug Gilbert out of the way, 
Rob Conway is the receiving end of a double team by the Tennessee Vols going for the cover is Reno Riggins, but unfortunately the referee still having problems getting Doug Gilbert out of the way. And uh, right now the Tennessee Vols are just going to maintain their dominance over Rob Conway, sends him to the rope. Look at this, sunset flip coming up. He's got him, one, two, count of two, and Reno Riggins kicks out. Now why was it when Reno had the man down for a cover right there, this Briscoe was off chatting in the corner, a bunch of coffee talk with Doug Gilbert over there. We need Gene Johnson in there to, to get things done properly. What is with Gene Johnson lately? I've questioned some of his calls in the past few weeks here on MCW, but right now, Mr. Briscoe has got his hands full. He's got the double count going on both Rob Conway and Reno Riggins. Riggins gets to his feet first. Puts Conway against the ropes. Oh, missed with the drop kick. There's an elbow drop. Nobody home for that one. Both men missed firing. Here's the tag and Stephen Dunn will come in. Double team coming up by the balls. That's right, and I want you to point out, Michael, that if you notice, once Stephen Dunn tagged in right there, they shot him into the ropes using their half of the ring, keeping away from Doug Gilbert and keeping the injured man in there and working him over and wearing him down even more. Well, the veteran prowess of the Tennessee Vols team knows the weakness of this other team and the weakness being the youngster in Rob Conway not being as ring savvy and as knowledgeable as perhaps his partner Doug Gilbert in the Tennessee Vols. And the Vols have basically captured this part of the match by keeping as you call him the injured man, the wounded man in the ring. That's right, and to say that he doesn't meet up to the level of somebody like the Tennessee Vols, the chairman of the board, you see right there missing with a clothesline. Now they're both down. That really isn't a big knock. That really is not a big knock, Michael, on Rob Conway because there's not too many people with the tag team prowess of Stephen Dunn. And now you see they're both down. Doug Gilbert's got this crowd going, wanting his partner to get the tag. Well, I got news for you. Let me say this about Rob Conway. He is one of the most impressive young stars I have seen, not only in MCW, but in any wrestling organization throughout the world. It's just that he's got his hands full right now with the Tennessee Vols working him over. He needs to make that tag to Doug Gilbert, but in the meantime, Dunn, going to come off the second strand, and Conway moved out of the way, and Stephen Dunn's head met the canvas head first. And here these fans go encouraging Conway to try and get the tag. You know what? It's just, it's just like these big heroes around here to worry about the crowd, and that's another thing Nick Dinsmore should think of. I think he's coming back way too quick just for the love of the crowd. Tags on both sides of the ring. Doug Gilbert in, Reno Regan's legal man in for his team, and Doug Gilbert is going to town. Now a pile driver. He's got him up. No, nope, he went for a power bomb. And Reno Riggins is down. Doug Gilbert going for the cover. Nope. He's waving to the fans, bringing Reno Riggins right back up. Reno obviously shook up. Now reversal. Look at that. And Reno Riggins finds nobody home, but Stephen Dunn did. He found the head of Doug Gilbert with that championship belt. Here's yep. the cover. Two and three. And look at that. Dunn holding on to Doug Gilbert. Well, I didn't see that, Michael, but I will say that Stephen Dunn definitely belted Doug Gilbert a good one right there. Yeah, belted is a good word, and the Tennessee Vols retain their titles. We'll be back. More MCW wrestling information and action are on the way. Well, everybody, you just saw what happened, and now Doug Gilbert and Rob Conway are going to pick up the, the, the crippled of the three, <laughs> yeah. Nick Dinsmore, and you're going to face the Tennessee Vols and a dangerous man in Music City Wrestling, Flash Flanagan. Well, Dangerous Doug, they call you Dangerous Doug, but the only thing dangerous about you, son, is your breath. Now, I think you've got too much vitalis on your hair, and you look like a grease monkey. All those people around the Nashville Sports Arena, they worship you because you're some kind of god to them. But you ain't nothing but a glorified redneck, son. Glorified redneck. Jeff Foxworthy, I think, wrote three books about you, and you ain't seen a royalty one on it. But let me tell you, this week it's going to be a little bit different, son. I'm getting a little tired of each week you coming in and then saying you got to go and defend a IW Japan, this, that, and the other sort of tin that you carry on your shoulder. Son, you don't look like any kind of world champion to me. You know what you look like? You look like you should be down at Jiffy Lube changing oil or being out snaking <laughs> somebody's toilet. That's what you look like to me, boy. And with that face, you look like you should be in some kind of circus sideshow. You know what I'm talking about? He walks, he talks, he can even ride a bicycle. That's the kind of living you should be making. <laughs> You'd make a lot more money at that than in professional wrestling. And then you got those two naive young 
wrestlers of Nick Dinsmore and Rob Conway. Son, don't you understand? Me and Mr. Dunn have already retired more people than Social Security. So with that being said, and without any further ado, I'm going to give you the hat maker. And you know exactly what I mean when I say that. The man that can make anyone wear a metal chair just like a hat. He's the chairman of the board of the Tennessee Vols, Stephen Dunn. Gilbert, let me tell you something. It's like the man says right here. Every time you get your butt whooped, you have to run off to Japan or Puerto Rico or somewhere, God knows where, and I think you're a big liar. That's what I think. I think you're scared, and I think you're yellow. Now, you're dragging Nick Dismore and this, this, what's his name? Rob Punk Conway. Whatever, the Iron, we got the Iron Man, we got the Dangerous One, and we got the Gimp. Well, let me tell you something. Tonight in Nashville, Doug, I'm tired of messing with you. It's going to come to a head. And tonight in Nashville is where we're going to take care of three problems called Dismore, Conway, and Gilbert. Now, let me tell you boys something. Every time we walk to the ring, we're bringing these belts. You want to call us a couple of thieves, that's fine and dandy, because you don't have to go far, and you don't have to have a metal detector to find them. You bring it on. And tonight in Nashville, Gilbert, what that tape didn't show, you called me back out, and you got your butt whooped right there in the middle of the Nashville fairgrounds. So tonight, after it's all done, after the smoke clears, you want to call me out again, I'll do it again, because I could care less. And you know why? Because we're the most dangerous tag team in professional wrestling today. And you're the Music City NWA Tag Team Champions. What do they call you, Reno? The Tennessee Vols, baby. We'll see you tonight. We're going to kick your ass.